Hello and welcome to today's glossy text effects tutorial. My name is Chris Parker and I have some exciting tips to share with you on this project. So check this out. This is the glossy design project you're going to create today. When you're done, you'll know how to create shiny text, how to minimize pixelated strokes and make them chrome like with your grading up tool and more. So are you ready to master this GIMP text effect? Awesome, let's do it. Let's go ahead and create our document for this project by going up to File and selecting New. For the dimensions, I have mine set up right here. 1920 for the width, 1080 for the height, and the resolution, let's set that to 300. And under fill width, we're going to select foreground color. And then for the color, I'm going to use this dark gray color right here. So if you want to use the same color, go ahead and type in this number right here in this box. Click OK. And we can now go ahead and add our content by grabbing our text tool. So go ahead and grab that. And the font I'm going to use is called Oswald Bold, which you can download for free via the link in the description below. For the size, I'm going to use 500. And then for the color, I'm going to use, let's start off with this orange color here. And then in all lowercase, I'm going to type out glossy. Let's go ahead and hit our escape key so we can exit that tool. And then we can grab our move tool with the letter M or via our toolbar up here. I'm gonna go ahead and move this into position right here. Actually, I think I want it to align this directly in the center but before we can do that with our alignment tool, we need to fix the layer boundary because it's very tall up here and we have a lot more space up here above the L versus these letters down here and it's not going to align properly. So let's go up to layer and select crop the content. Now we can grab our alignment tool from our toolbar or via the keyboard shortcut, which is the letter Q. And before we can actually align the text, we need to tell GIMP which layer we want to align. So all we have to do is activate the layer by clicking on the inside of the layer boundary. And we know it's activated because we have these white squares in each corner. Now let's go to tool options and select relative to first item and then align with the second icon here and then the one right below it. Now let's go back up to layer and select layer to image size so we can increase the layer boundary so any edits we apply are not limited to that smaller layer boundary. Now we're going to go ahead and right click on our glossy layer here and I'm going to select alpha to selection and that's going to select all the text and I'm going to create a new layer called gradient one and make sure you have it filled with transparency and go ahead and click OK. I'm going to go ahead and turn off this layer because we don't need that one right now. And we're going to add a gradient inside of our selection here. So let's grab our gradient tool right here. And in the gradient options, we want to make sure that we have foreground to background RGB selected. If you don't have that panel open, just go to Windows Dockable Dialogs and select gradients from here. Once you have that selected, go ahead and pick out your colors. I'm going to use this bright orange color here. So here's the information to type in this box if you want to use the same colors. And then for the background color, I'm going to choose a darker orange color. Now with the gradient tool, I can click up here and drag down to add that gradient. Now, if you want it darker on the top and brighter on the bottom, you can actually come over here and click on this icon here to reverse it. That's not what I want, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that back. The other thing we can do is we can actually change the colors if we're not happy with the colors. So before you commit to this gradient, just come over here and click on your background or foreground color and then adjust the colors accordingly. I do want a darker color down here. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And then I can change how much of each color is applied as well by adjusting these little nodes on either end, longer or shorter. So I'm gonna bring this one down to right about there and then enter or return to apply that edit. Let's go ahead and go up to select and choose none to deselect. 
We're going to go back over to our layer panel here and right click on gradient one. And we're going to make another selection. And we're also going to create a new layer called stroke. Let's actually call it aluminum stroke because it's going to look like aluminum. Not sure how to spell that. I-U-M. And transparency for the fill. Click OK. And now I'm going to grab my zoom tool here so I can zoom in and show you what's going to happen. I'm going to go up here to select and choose grow so I can increase the size of the selection. So I'm going to increase it by four pixels and click OK. And now that selection is much larger than it was before. And now I can fill it in with a color or a gradient to add that stroke. Now we need to take this aluminum stroke layer and move it below the gradient one first. Let's grab our gradient tool again and then go to your gradients panel and locate this preset right here called brushed aluminum. Now let's go ahead and add that in. Just click and drag down and all those little white triangles or diamond shapes right there, I should say are different points of gray to white or white to gray, which creates that aluminum type reflection. When you're happy with the adjustment, go ahead and click enter or return to add that stroke to that layer. And then we need to deselect with control shift and a, or again, go up to select and select none right there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out. I'm just holding down my control key as I zoom out and I accessed my zoom tool with the letter Z. Next, let's add a drop shadow. So in our layers panel, we're going to select our gradient one layer and we're going to duplicate it and rename it drop shadow. We're also going to move that layer down below the other two there. And then we can go up to filter, light and shadow and select drop shadow from here. We have a ton of options to choose from to style our drop shadow. From here, you can change the angle and they're locked together by default, the X and the Y axis. So if you want to control those separately, unlink them and then you can adjust them accordingly based on your creative vision. We can also increase the opacity so that that drop shadow is darker. That's a little too much. I'm gonna bring that back down to right about there. And we can also increase the blur radius so that the edging of that drop shadow is softer or harder. That's too hard. So I'm going to come back to right about there. And there's also a couple other options here to customize your drop shadow as well. Go ahead and play around with those. Once you're happy, click OK. And now you have your drop shadow. How cool is that? All right. So we have a couple more steps left here. Let's go back up to our gradient one layer and select it. Again, we're going to make a selection by right clicking and choosing alpha to selection. Let's create a new layer and let's call it reflection because we're going to create a shine or a reflection in a portion of the content. And then make sure you have fill with set to transparency. Click OK. Let's go ahead and click on these two little icons right here. That allows us to switch to the black color for the foreground, white color for the background. And then we can fill in the selection by going up to edit and choosing fill with background color. Go ahead and deselect. And now we need to cut out part of this text so that we can create our reflection. So to do that, we're going to use our ellipse select tool. So go ahead and choose that and click and drag out a selection. Anywhere that this tool intersects with the text is where it's going to be cut out. So just keep that in mind as you adjust your selection. So you can make that as big or as small as you like. I think I'm going to go with something like that. We now need to invert the selection by going up to select and choosing invert. And then we can delete that with either our delete key or if you're on a PC, your backspace key. All right, let's go up to select again and deselect. And now we need to customize this reflection because it's a little too intense. So what we're going to do is add a layer mask in white. Let's grab our gradient tool. Make sure you have black and white set for the foreground and background color. We also need to go back to our gradients panel here and choose 
foreground to background, and then you can click and drag down to reduce the shine or that reflection. How cool is that? I love it. All right, I think I like that right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter or return. Let's go back to the layer panel because you may find that still too intense. I think it is, so I'm gonna drop the opacity just a little bit. So maybe something like that. All right, so the last step is to add a lens flare to add, well, a little flare to our design. All right, let's go ahead and create a new layer called lens flare. Let's fill it with the foreground color and your foreground color should be black. Click OK and everything disappears, that's okay. What we're going to do now is drop the opacity so we can see the text below it. And this is going to help us place that lens flare exactly where we want it. Let's go up to filters, light and shadow and lens flare. So there's our flare. We just need to position it now. You can place it anywhere you want. Right now I have the X and Y position unlocked so that I can adjust the lens flare accordingly based on the axis I want to control. So I'm thinking maybe closer to the outline that we created with that brush aluminum preset. We can also drop the opacity here, but I would rather have that control from the actual layer over here. So let's go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to increase the opacity. And then in order to see all that content below it again, we're going to go up to mode and choose our screen blending mode and it blends in much better that way versus opacity, but the flare is too intense. So I'm gonna drop that opacity all the way down here to maybe something like that. 